good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic Mod Am Toys video today, ladies and gentlemen. It is the, t the the end. It is the end of 2020. We're coming up on the end. Thank Christ. <laughs> but since it is the end of the year, guys, I figure what better way than to do a ranking style video before we get into the full collections, before we get into the room tours, and we get into the end of MDT Live coming up at the end of the year right here. I figured let's do a ranking video of all the customs that I did throughout the entire year of 2020. I'm pretty sure I got them all. I don't think I left any out. If I did, I do apologize, but I, did, I feel like I did my very best not to leave any out. I went through all my old videos from this year. I went through the surgeries, the appointments, everything, and I feel I feel like I got them all. Besides maybe my wife's figure and my brother's figure, I'm pretty sure this is all the customs I made this year. So let's shut the hell up and dive into it, guys. Let's start off at the bottom of the ranking, and this one's kind of surprising for me, to be honest with you. But we're going to start things off with this white demon or anti-demon fart bag. I, I don't know what this is. I really, when I made made it. It looked a lot better in my head and I don't know. I just felt like the execution at the very end here didn't look very good. I think it's the head sculpt that's really throwing me off like the black around the eyes and stuff. He looks like a damn like clown or, or mime or something. I don't know. I like the kick pads in the white and the black and the white and everything tying in but as a Demon Finn Balor it just doesn't move the needle for me and so for that reason guys it is going to come in at the bottom of the ranking. Let's move into the next spot guys. It is going to be this all black New Japan Shinsuke and I feel like this one's pretty underrated to be honest with you. Very clean clean work here. All it is really is just some part swaps and then a painted crotch. I got this formula from Balor Figs UK. Thought it was a really good formula. Finn Balor arms, William Regal torso, shoulders, and crotch. Seth Rollins leg, Shinsuke head sculpt, and then just painted on the black there. And if you guys are big New Japan Shinsuke fans or you want to make this, it is very, very easy. I think you guys will have no issues whatsoever. So I recommend it. It has a lot of good articulation. It's on ball joints, so I don't think you're going to have a problem with that. I think anybody can make that one, and it would be a nice one to your collection. Moving forward, guys. We got one that's kind of shocking, to be honest with you, but it's just part switching. It's not really a custom. It's going to be our Adam Cole in the War Games gear. Now, again, I just feel like this one isn't the best simply because I feel like his his legs are kind of stiff, I guess, because he's not on ball joints like regular Adam Cole's. It's still not bad by any means, but you guys can see his legs get a little stiff. I guess putting these boot legs onto this, like, Kyle O'Reilly kick pads, uh, thighs and stuff just kind of messed him up a little bit. Also, the trunks aren't completely accurate. He's a little bit short compared to my other Adam Coles when I can switch out the thighs, make him a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, and not look so small, in my opinion. So, but here he is up next to Demon Finn Balor. I just, yeah, I don't think Finn Balor's that much taller than Adam Cole in that retrospect. So, I'm just saying, yeah, it just, it isn't bad. It's pretty cool, like, if you, like for a placeholder. That's what it is, right? It's a placeholder until we get the official Undisputed Era War Games Adam Cole figure. And so, I'll just hold it there, and then I'll switch out the legs when we get that new figure. But that is why he comes in at that spot. Next up is going to be Bobby Lashley Trashley. So Bobby Trashley coming in right here. This one was really fun. I actually like the way this looks a lot. We put the Shelton Benjamin arms on there. He's got the short biker trunks. It's basically a fix-up of the Elite 69 Bobby Lashley, but we added the little biker trunks. We switched out smaller knee pads, and then we painted up some boots for him to complete the look. I think there's a basic or a battle pack like this that came with Finn Balor, so I felt like this was really good right there. Fits in perfectly with him, so Bobby Trashley is going to come in at this spot. I thought it was slightly better than the rest. Not the most exciting, but it was really fun to make, and I feel like it can fit hold right there. Next up, guys, is going to be our SummerSlam fix-up Seth Rollins. Again, not a lot of stuff going on with this. This is basically a head squap. A head squap. So I guess we're doing head squaps nowadays, and all that is is a head squap. You got the uh, top talents vest, or not top talents vest, but the, the TNF vest on there with the accurate lines, and it's just a good head sculpt that's an accurate hair, and it, it, I feel like the Mod Podge chipped off right there. It doesn't look very good. I think I put it on there too thick. I I need to repaint that or something, but it's a very clean custom. I like it better than the rest, so it came in at this ranking. Next up, guys, is going to be Jungle Boy. Now, Jungle Boy goes hand-in-hand -hand with Luchasaurus, but Luchasaurus is not on this list. I had to end up making a few changes. I still haven't finished that custom. There's a lot of stuff that goes into making a Luchasaurus, so I'm still working on that and getting that finalized, but Jungle Boy is here in the list, and BEW did make this head sculpt, so it was kind of a tag team project. I made everything from the neck down. I like it. You know, it's not the greatest, but I, th I think it works out pretty good. It's a good Jungle Boy form and everything. It's just not the most exciting figure ever, so I am going to stick him over here. I can't wait to get an AEW Jungle Boy. Jesus. Next up, guys, we are moving into Seth Rollins. Now, this is like my fantasy tag team Seth Rollins where I gave him the green hair. I really like the green hair. The green hair is really why he's this high on the list and why he surpassed the rest of this field back here. I really love the black and green gloves. Kind of reminds me of, you know, a 2015 Rollins or a 2014 Rollins combined with, you know, the green and the, the Tron attire from 2016. I just thought it was a really cool attire and 
everything. So the lime green hair actually glows in the dark as well. So I, I, I don't know. It just is really badass. So I wanted, I felt like it was better than the rest. I like the fantasy attires a lot. So maybe that's why he trumped the rest here. Next up, guys, we have a pair of Kevin Owens. First up is going to be the fix-up Kevin Owens, but it does have the custom painted head sculpt with the band-aid on there from the from Hell's Gate, or not Hell's Gate, but MDT Live that he will be wearing on there. He has the red and white shorts here, red and black boots, ties into the perfect Kevin Owens stun, stow, and stish, stish, stop. And then uh, pr pretty much why this is on here is just the custom painted head sculpt on the updated body. I just, I liked it more. Basically, I'm ranking these by, by like and, you know, skill and stuff of that nature. How tough was it? How did it come out? The look of it, how much I like it compared to the others is kind of how we're doing things, so I figured that would go next. And then slightly above that is the other Kevin Owens from Hell's Gate where he's a bloody freaking mess. You can see where the cut started on the right side of his forehead right here. And then this is, you know, months later when we finally get another show out. He's got full sleeves. He's got a new ass beard. He's got some gray in the beard. But I really like this orange attire that he rocked at Hell's Gate. The orange kick pads, the orange KOs, the Kevin F and Owens with the flame decals. I really like that, man. I, I love the how it ties into the pick fed and everything is really badass to me. So any pick fed customs are usually going to get up there because they hold like a special place to me, which is actually going to take us into the next few, which is going to be Hell's Gate Kenny Omega. I mean, this dude looked like a freaking corpse out there. He got his abs he, he got absolutely destroyed. He's got blood all over his wrist tape, his arms, his chest, his head. It's just a bloody mess. I love this figure. I like that attire a lot, and uh, I would love to recreate that attire in AEW figure form. I think that'd be pretty cool. Moving up next, guys, we have Roman Reigns. We have Roman Reigns from Hell's Gate, and this is a really clean attire. I was super happy with the way this turned out. I can't wait to get an updated Roman head sculpt, maybe some updated Roman parts that we can put together to make more Hell's Gate, not Hell's Gate, but more MDT Live pick-fed Roman Reigns. So uh, just the way the bandana, the bloodline ties into the vest with the day one-ish. You got the black and red here, the red tights on the black shorts and black tape, and the Uso boots. It just, I don't know, it's really clean. I was super happy to come up with that, and I think it turned out perfect. So there is Roman Reigns. Next up, guys, is going to be our Batista from Great American Bash back in the day. He's still missing the decal on his butt cheeks, but at the end of the day, this is a really clean custom. I've always loved this Batista attire. It's one of my favorites he ever wore. I just love the way the boots look, the black and red and white tying all together is super duper clean. I finally sealed it up so it's not going to chip or anything. Elbow pads and knee pads look really good together. I'm just missing that B design on the back right there, but uh, at the end of the day, I still like it more than some of these others here, or I guess I like it more than all of these others. You could have probably put Kevin, Kenny, and this Roman above it maybe, but at the end of the day, not a huge deal. It just got up a little bit more spots in the ranking. Next up, guys, is going to be our WrestleMania 36 Seth freaking Rollins. What a clean custom, right? You got the Monday Night Messiah here in the white and gold. The only reason it's not ranked higher, if this was more detailed, if it had maybe a better head sculpt, I love this head sculpt, but I really wish it had a better head sculpt, like a more detailed, maybe a pissed off head sculpt, or maybe the Monday Night Messiah man bun or something, but at the end of the day, this is a super clean custom. I wish it had more details. It'd probably be ranked much higher, but I still like it a lot, so it came in at this spot. Next up, guys, is going to be my Spider-Man Cedric Alexander, which has since been changed to what it was. It used to have um, another, uh, you know, just his white wrist tape arm over here. It used to have red kick pads with white outsoles, but since then I did change to a blue sleeve norm. I also switched out the kick pads for blue kick pads, and I like it a lot. You know, I, I feel like, I don't know, I like having both versions. I, I need to make more. I have a lot of Cedrics. I just need more of this torso, this old Kofi Kingston torso mold. That way I can switch it out, get the ripped up torso, and then make custom fantasy attires for Cedric, because I really want to do it. I just need to switch those torsos, get all those pieces in here to make that correct, but Cedric looks really clean. Still got blood on his face. I feel like it makes it a defining moment. When you keep the blood on the figures on the shelf, it kind of is like, oh yeah, I remember that moment, and if I clean it, it I don't know. It's weird. Next up, guys, we are moving into the top seven right here. Coming in at number seven is going to be Leo Rush. Le 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 Leo Rush comes in at the number seven spot. This was made out of a Drake Maverick, a Kalisto, and a custom head sculpt. All I did was paint the head sculpt, added all the tattoos, but having an elite Leo Rush is just so cool to me because he was my favorite independent talent for a long, long time. You guys know what happened. He came over to WWE. We never got a figure of him. To finally make my own Leo Rush is super exciting. It looks way better than the old one I used to have, and who knows? He could end up in the pick fed one day. We'll have to see, but nonetheless, there is Leo Rush. Next up, guys, is going to be what I dubbed at one point my best custom ever, but after multiple, or I didn't dub it that. I just thought maybe it compete for the top custom ever, but it is this demon like Carnage Finn Balor. I love the chest design. I love the face design. I love the red sparkly trunks 
with the with the black teeth design, teeth demon stuff going on, the sleeves, and on the back you got like the fin silhouette reaching out there. And I feel like overall it's definitely a, a nice custom. I like the way it came out. I'm proud of the paint detail that we got in there, but I feel like it could be better. The chest design, like the carnage look that it's got going on on the shoulders and the teeth, behind the teeth or whatever. I feel like it could be better. I still like it a lot and everything, but over time it has kind of lost its pizzazz for me, so that is why it is going to come in at this spot. But I really still do like it and everything. You guys can let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. Coming in at number five, guys, it is going to be my Joker Jeff Hardy. The Joker Jeff Hardy, I actually love this figure. I think that everything tying in, you even have the green shoes to tie it all together here. I love the way the, you know, the, the Jeff attire ties in, the way the purple and green over here ties in with the green over here and the green and the purple and everything going on with the face. I love the neon colors we got. I like the face paint. I like the rainbow hair that he's got going on. Uh, ever since I just saw that picture on Google Images and then decided to replicate it into a custom with the Jeff Hardy, I was ex super excited to make it. I was super enthralled with the way it came out. What the hell am I turning into a damn dictionary, Brad? Enthralled. And I, I just, I, I saw. I don't know what the hell's going on now, Brad, but there's Joker Jeff Hardy. He comes in that spot. That was number five, by the way. Joker Jeff is number five. Coming in at number four, guys, we have the Pink Legends Eddie Guerrero. This one came out super clean. I love the way this figure came out. Super duper clean. One of my favorites from the year so far. Well, it's gonna, I, I doubt I make any more customs before the end of the year, so there you go. But one of my favorite customs of the year, the pink came out super duper clean. A lot of people enjoyed this custom a lot on Instagram. I love the way the neon colors and everything play off of the pink. Uh, it's just super clean. I like the way it came out. That, that Vallejo pink color that I used and the paint went on super easy. It was a super fun and clean, easy custom to make. I've said easy about 17 times, so I'm just gonna shut the hell up and move on. But Eddie Guerrero comes in at number four. Coming in at number three, guys, is going to be Orange Cassidy. Now, this one is kind of a, a kind of an underdog story because at, like a few months ago when I made a similar video to this, Orange Cassidy was like the second worst figure on the list. I think there was like 25 customs or something like that on the list because I included customs that I had gotten from other people. These are all made by me mainly, so for him to jump that many spots into the number three spot, the reason being is because when I first made him, he was way too tall. You guys remember at Hell's Gate, he was like a giant. He was like two or three inches taller than Cody Rhodes. And then when I remade him, when I when I modded him, he ended up going from way too tall to way too short. So I was like, damn, man, I feel like I wanted him to be, I feel like making him way too tall would have been better than making him way too short. So since then, I made some adjustments. I fixed it. I went into the lab and we have finally created a Orange Cassidy that is not too short, not too tall. I think it's a perfect height at this juncture. So I think that uh, this had to go right way back up in the list. And I think even in that video, I stated if this was at the right height, I feel like it would be ranked way higher. And there it is today in the number three ranking. So there's Orange Cassidy. We are getting our AEW figure, which will trump this one. But this one is still really good in the Mattel, you know, figure realm. There's another one to add to the dumbass dictionary of MDT. Just adding all kinds of crazy words. Next up, guys, is going to be the Iron Man Championship Johnny Gargano Hell's Gate attire. This one was super clean. It also looks like Rescue from Iron Man, if you want to say that. But the whole main idea of the attire was to match the Iron Man Championship that he was competing for. So on here, it is pretty much the Iron Man Championship or the Iron Man attire that Johnny Gargano wore in real life, except it has, uh, it's blue now. It has all the blue parts, so it's blue and gold. Johnny wrestling on the back in the Iron Man font. And you can't forget his arc reactor vest there with the blue and gold tying in. So the Iron Man Championship on Vindication. Vindication is the blue brand. The Iron Man Championship is blue and gold, so that ties in perfectly with the championship. So he was going after that championship, so he made an attire based on the Iron Man Championship, which is relative to the pick fed and the pick fed only. So I, you know, it's not only a badass attire, but it ties into the pick fed, which makes it even better. So there you go. And coming in at the number one spot, guys, it is going to be none other than the Buzz Lightyear Seth freaking Rollins. Could it be anything else? I think anybody probably knew what this thing was going to be when they first clicked on the video. How can you How can you even look at it, Brad? I can't even believe that we even brought this to fruition. I remember I was looking at an SR logo, the Space Ranger logo on a Buzz Lightyear, and then it clicked in my head. Oh my god, how has nobody ever made a Seth Rollins? The SR plays perfectly in the Space Ranger, and it looks like it. So I immediately took to 2K, mocked it up on the screen, and then screenshotted it and got about what I wanted it to look like, and then I replicated it in figure form, got the custom decals made. The, the head sculpt does have a BEW custom pissed off head sculpt I got made for Hell's Gate. Even if it just had the regular Top Talents head sculpt on it or something like that, it would still be a beautiful custom. 
awesome and I love it. The, the Buzz Lightyear gloves and the custom vest with Rollins name tag and the buttons and the SR and the purple and the white and the green is just super clean and it is definitely my favorite custom of the year, the best custom of the year and the response for it was immaculate. So there's no doubt about it that Rollins had to be the number one spot for me. But that pretty much does it for my full rankings of every custom I did this year. Sorry about the camera being all wacky. I was trying to back up to give it a full scale view right there. But I hope that everybody enjoyed their Christmas yesterday. I hope that it was a very enjoyable day for everybody. I hope you got everything you wanted and everything. If you guys missed my Christmas haul, definitely go check that out. I'd really appreciate it. Before we get out of here, guys, we do got to get into our random shout out from, uh, from, uh, from a few days ago. So let's get into it. So this shout out is going to go to M. Vang. He says, it's okay, Trey. We appreciate what you have done this year and we appreciate your content and your hard work and you have been the best WWE figure channel ever and we appreciate you. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much to M. Vang and everybody that checked out the I'm Pissed video. I really appreciate it, guys. It really meant a lot to me for you guys to go check out that video and see what was up and all the situation and everything. But I really appreciate it. M. Vang, thank you so very much for the nice comment and the nice things. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas. I sure as hell did. But being the best WWE figure channel ever, that means a lot for you guys to say that and for you guys to check out the videos and everything like that. I really, really do appreciate it. That means the world to me. And you guys are what make me keep going. You guys are what, you know, may, brings the content. And you guys motivate me every single day to get in here and, you know, make a video and everything like that. And you guys make any of the work or the videos or whatever worth it. And I just appreciate you guys. I love you guys so very much. So thank you to M. Vang. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I know 2020 was a rough year, but 2021 will be the best yet. And I guarantee it. So thank you guys so very much for all of your support this year. I'm sure I'll say it again before the end of the year because we got so many videos coming up at the end of the year right here with a lot of stuff going on. But I'm getting out of here, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys. And do not forget to cross the line. Or wait a minute. I said do not forget to cross the line. I meant don't cross it. You cross the line.